Hey everybody, Steve Eveleth here, Livermore, California, Remax Accord. How's everyone doing today? So today, this video newsletter is going to be on how to choose a great agent to work with in the local area that you're buying or selling a home in. So there's a lot of competition between agents and brokers, obviously. You probably get your doorstep peppered with pamphlets and flyers and stuff in the, meme, yeah, in the mail, uh, emails. <clears throat> I'm sure somebody you know out there is a realtor or your friend just got their license or your neighbor's a realtor and so a lot of us out there chasing the same dollar. So at the end of the day, when you're going to choose a realtor, what do you look for and how do you make the decisions on who you choose? So um, first of all, the real estate industry is very competitive. Um, most of the, it's a very high, there's a very high probability that you're going to get referred by a friend or family member that used somebody before, or you've used somebody in the past that provided you great service, okay? That's typically, people usually, if they have a good experience, you know, they go back to that same experience, right? right why not, right? If you haven't had a good experience, or you're a first-time buyer or a first-time seller, and you're looking for an agent, probably one of the first things that you're gonna do is you're gonna go ask a family member or a friend or a neighbor who they've used, right? So it's a referral business, right? Somebody's credibility that you know very well, uh, if they had a good experience with somebody, you're probably gonna take that pretty seriously, okay? Maybe that's how you'll make your decision. Um, online reviews, this is huge these days now, but they're also kind of a double-edged sword online reviews, and I'll tell you why. Online reviews are so powerful. The most powerful tool out there, platform right now for online reviews is Yelp. Now, Yelp is a double-edged sword. You'll, you'll find uh, people in the industry that do not have Yelp accounts because once if you get a bad Yelp review on Yelp, it's very difficult to get it off Yelp, and it can significantly hurt your reputation or your business. Now, there's a lot of stigma out there about Yelp. You know, are they practicing? How, are they uh, practicing the right way ethically and and being able to have anybody go review a business? And whether that person's legit or not, whether that review is legit or not, can it hurt somebody's business, hurt somebody's reputation? Yes, it can. Uh, myself, personally, I've got over 55 five-star Yelp reviews. I've probably got about 70 or 80 reviews, but sometimes Yelp hide review, hides the reviews if Yelp thinks that they're not original or they don't provide certain content or you get too many reviews at one time. The algorithm and platform of Yelp, nobody really knows how it works, so it's kind of disappointing in a way because all my reviews are legit and however, for some reason, Yelp hides some of them. However, I got 55 five-star Yelp reviews up. Um, Yelp is very powerful. Uh, it, it holds a professional to a high standard, a high level standard of providing great service across the board, right? If a, if a client calls me from Yelp, I know that I need to provide them with that same consistent five-star service that I provide every client with, but more so because they're more than likely going to go on Yelp and give me a good review when we're done. So Yelp is very powerful. However, it's a double-edged sword. Some of these online review companies are popping up and they realize how powerful online reviews are. So there's a lot of fake stuff out there or these online review companies are promising to get your credibil credibility developed, get your reputation developed more strongly with online reviews promising you more business and they're fake reviews uh, or they're not regulated and they're not monitored. So you have to be careful with where you're finding your online reviews with your prof service professional you're considering hiring. So I always go to Yelp. I'm on Yelp. Uh, Yelp is a great platform. Um, you know, next, uh, who you're going to want to hire? You want to make sure that somebody's been in the business for a while. I'd say, God, at least, at least five, eight, preferably ten years. You know, fifteen, twenty years is great. If you go thirty to forty years, that's a great time for an agent to be in the business. But you also, sometimes time doesn't necessarily mean anything. Just because an agent has been in business for 40 years, Bob Smith, okay? Well, is Bob Smith really at the top of his game? And is Bob Smith 
doing volume deals in this current environment today and the landscape of super highly aggressive buyers, multiple offers, little to no contingencies, bidding wars, navigating tough landscapes. A lot's happening. When you list a home, boom, you got you got about a week, week and a half, open houses, brokers, tours, get your disclosures filled out. Are you gonna do inspections? The listing agent needs to be ready for buyer's agent's calls. Like when I take on a listing, oftentimes before I even have that sucker on the market, I'm getting calls from buyers and listing agents ready to make offers and write and, and you know, write offers on that place before it's even on the market. You know, so a listing agent, you know, all I need to do is I put a, 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 up, a up and coming listing on Facebook and I'll get two or three calls on that listing and it's not even ready for the market yet. So how do you how do you how do you handle that? Your listing agent needs to know how to handle that. You know, if you want to do an off market sale, get your place sold before it even goes on MLS. Is that going to be a pro or a con? Is it a great deal for the seller because it's sold before it went on MLS? Or did the sell you the seller shoot yourself in the foot because you could have put it on MLS you know, with the agent and had multiple offers and got it bid up more? So does that listing agent know the comps and know that that off-market offer that you got is could pretty much be your first money is your best money and that's kind of about what they were expecting because they know the area in a multiple offer environment so why not go ahead and grab that offer before it goes on the market and make life easy for everybody or do you want to roll your dice and take a chance and get more uh, putting it on the market uh, or could you get less? <laughs> so there's a lot to think about uh, as a seller and who you're hiring as your listing agent. You know, uh, does your listing agent have resources? Um, do they have good quality vendors? I'm talking who's doing their flyers. Are the flyers nice, beautiful, and colorful? Like I recently put out this flyer right here. You know, so all the colors are lined up. It pops. You know, these are my recent sales here. A uh, picture, obviously, of my happy little face. God, I look so much younger there. Um, but it kind of pops, you know. Is your listing agent got a great photographer? Uh, <laughs> have a great photographer. Uh, you know, are they doing videos in there? How the quality of the pictures? Uh, when your listing agent's inputting your listing on MLS, all the pictures lined up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, how they should be. As if a buyer is actually walking through the front door, going room to room, or all the pictures, or are they all sideways, upside down, cut off, or is the first picture of the front door and the second picture of the backyard? I mean, these are things that, you know, when a buyer is looking online to buy a property, man, they want to see something that pops, and something that pops is going to attract them to that house. Man, this is a good one. We got to get on this, right? At the same time, you don't want the pictures too beautiful and edited, right? Because then they give the buyer a false sense of disappointment. If the pictures are too awesome and amazing, and the photographer is using this amazing wide-angle lens that makes a you know 10 by 15 room look like a 40 by 40 room, okay, you don't want that because the, the pictures may look amazing. Get the buyer to the house. The buyer is going to get to the house and go, oh, wow. We thought this room was a lot bigger. What's happening here? This isn't really what we wanted, right? So you have to work through all that, right? Open houses, brokers, tours, you know, is your listing agent, do they do their own open houses? Do they do their own tours? Do they put food out on the tours? Do they know a lot of the local agents in the area, right? So I've had a listing agents, I'm sorry, I've had sellers say, well, you know, what about Redfin? You know, we heard we can, we can list our home for 1%, right? And, oh my God, sounds like the deal of a lifetime, right? Almost too good to be true. Highly, highly advise not using Redfin. You get what you pay for. Listing your home for 1%, if it's a $700,000 home, you're gonna have to put 2.5% out, first of all, to the buyer's agent. So it's really gonna be 3.5%, right? And that 1% going to the listing agent after taxes and after flyers and photography and marketing and, you know, that $7,000 that you think you're listing your home for is really going to end up netting that listing agent three or $4,000. And I don't know about anybody else, 
but I don't know any any agent that's going to go through all that work of listing a home for one percent without coming to work with a heck of an attitude and wanting to just promote the seller to grab any possible offer as quick as possible, whether it's the right offer or not, because a lot of these agents don't want to work, right? And what, who wants to work for a quarter of a paycheck, right? You see where I'm going for this? Um, so with this, so Redfin, I highly advise not using Redfin, okay? You get hourly workers. If you're a buyer and you are using a Redfin agent, more than likely, that Redfin agent's shown you a house that day, and they've shown five other buyers a house that day. They're waiting till, till for five o'clock so they can get off. Uh, if you know, get off work, and you're not going to hear. You may not get the same agent. You may not hear from them again. If you want to write an offer on a house, more than likely you're going to go to a different department with another agent or another level of Redfin that you haven't worked with before. It's all assembly line corporate. Those agents have no reputation, rapport, relationship with the listing agent. And relationships are huge. Relationships get things done. Uh, and I'll be honest with everybody, when it comes to Redfin and us local brokers and agents here that probably, you know, do 60, 70 percent of the business, you know, they say it's true. 20, 30 percent of the agents that's been around for a while are doing 60, 70 percent of the business. Very true, especially in the small town level more than I'm in. So when a Redfin agent, you know, comes to the table in any negotiations uh, and any deals that us local brokerages and agents are working on and working with, we kind of like, ah, Redfin, ah, uh, you know, what kind of Wild West shit show or what are you, we going to be working with here? <laughs> and that's just the truth. So if you want to go out there and save some money on listing your home or you want to, you're a buyer and you're uh, easily enticed by, hey, we're giving you back a half percent or whatever it is. We're giving you back a percent. And, you know, if any, any brokerage or agent that has to give away their paycheck to get business, I'd be a little leery on that. Any successful agent that knows their worth and value is going to stand behind what they charge, uh, especially in listing a home. And also, on a, with, for a buyer's agent, you guys, if you're a buyer, the buy, you do not pay the buyer's agent's commission. The seller pays the buyer's agent's commission. So uh, a buyer's agent's commission shouldn't even be a topic of conversation with the buyer. The buyer's agent's job is to get out there and kick ass for the buyer, write great offers, be available when the buyer needs them, and be available to show properties when a buyer wants to see a property, okay? Help the buyer do their due diligence on uh, getting disclosures for that property. Are there any reports and inspections, okay? And then when a buyer wants to write that offer, the buyer's agent needs to get a report going with that listing agent, get all the pertinent details and what the seller's looking for as far as terms and price to get have the best chance to get that buyer's offer accepted. And all these things need to happen in, in acute, perfect timing and aggressive timing for a buyer to have the best chance to get their offer accepted in this market. You know, if you're working with a Redfin agent and they're eight to five and there's a property that came on the market at 530 and you don't get around to talking to that Redfin agent. Let's say it's a Tuesday. You don't get around to talking to that Redfin agent until Thursday or Friday and seeing that property. Guess what? In the hot market we're in right now, that property could be gone, right? So relationships are everything, guys. Uh, very important to choose somebody local, experienced, someone you can trust, uh, someone that you like. Uh, and the reason I say someone you like, you may think, well, that's kind of an odd statement. You know, this is about business. It's not about personal. So in my experience, it, it is. There is some personnel, personnel that comes into play because when you hire a realtor, you're working with a realtor, whether you're a seller or a buyer, uh, you're going to be basically married to that person for 30 to 60 days, maybe 90 days. So, <laughs> you know, and I, I feel the same way. I don't necessarily take on clients. If I get somebody that calls me up and they're arrogant, obnoxious, pushy, or difficult, or abrasive, 
uh, to work with. You know, I, I sit there and I say in the, in the back of my mind, and it's funny because oftentimes they're calling me, well, we're, we're interviewing realtors and our last realtor was a piece of work. And if, you know, you're anything like him, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm going, shit, if you're anything like that, right? It goes two ways. So, you know, a good realtor that knows the worth and value and time, they're going to pick and choose you as much as you're going to be interviewing them. So you want to tread very lightly and go into a relationship with your realtor as, you know, easy going, easy to work with. You got your act together. You're serious about buying or selling. And you're going to be working with that realtor side by side, attached to the hip for 30, 60, 90 days. There's going to be times when you're, you might be talking on the phone every day for a week. You're navigating plans to get your home on the market. You're dealing with vendors. You're getting carpet installed, getting the place painted, figuring out moving, uh, where you're going. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming into play. How do we want showings to happen? Is the place ready to show? Um, you know, so it's actually just as much work for you as a buyer or a seller. You're going to be putting in due diligence and work just as much as the realtor you hire and you guys have to have a good relationship or it's just going to be a shit show and everybody's going to get frustrated and once bad energy is injected into a transaction or relationships it's just like a you know a bad experience with a contractor or that neighbor that you can't stand or you know something it's just you know relationships are huge and you want to have nice easy going conducive productive energy with who you're working with so long and short of it is when you're uh, looking for a realtor, uh, you want to look at online reviews. You want to look at is that realtor been in the community for a while? Are they actively doing deals now in the community? Not just been around for 40 years, but how many deals have they done in the past 6, 12 months? Uh, are they local to the community? Do they know the product in your neighborhood that they're selling? Uh, do they come highly recommended from friends or family? Do you know other people who have used them? Check their Yelp reviews. Uh, are they, you know, productive, outstanding, great members of the community, trusted, reputable? Uh, obviously, you wouldn't want to hire anybody uh, shady with a past or criminal record. Well, most, I mean, obviously, a real estate agent with a license wouldn't necessarily have a criminal record, but you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, there's a 10, 15 years ago, there's a lot of shady stuff going on in the market in the mid 2000s. And there were some realtors, quite frankly, back then that they shouldn't have been in the business and they're kind of resurfacing some of them still in the business. So you want to make sure, you know, what were they doing 10, 15 years ago, you know? So there's a lot to consider when you're hiring a uh, good local reputable agent. Uh, my name is Steve Eveleth. If you're interested in hiring me to buy or sell, uh, I'd be happy to meet and interview with you. 925-487-2246. Uh, uh, SteveEveleth at gmail.com. I hope that this video was helpful for you if you're a buyer or a seller today, and you have a great day.